Welcome to the cabin. Today, we're converting an Age of Sigmar Stormcast Eternal into a 40k character. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. With that said, let's get to it. So I sometimes show pictures of Warhammer miniatures to my girlfriend. Most of the time she says, it's too creepy or no thank you. But when the Dominion box set was released and I showed her Indrasta, one of the Stormcast Eternal heroes, she really liked that one. I immediately decided I was going to paint one up for her birthday as a surprise. But since she's not really into Age of Sigmar, I had to convert it into 40k somehow. One of the few armies that she likes the look of are actually the Sisters of Silence, and she has a small force that she tried painting herself. These were the very first miniatures she ever tried painting, and I think she did a great job. So my plan was to convert Andrasta into a Sister of Silence character. Since it has huge wings, I thought we could give it some house rules based on Saint Celestine for the Sisters of Battle. I got my hands on Andrasta from someone selling off bits from the Dominion box. My plan was to use most of the model, but remove some of the sculpted parts that indicate its Stormcast Eternal allegiance. Also, Saint Celestine doesn't carry a spear, so that would have to go, along with the head. The latter would just be a simple swap with the Silent Sister one. I also wanted to add some shoulder pads from their set, as well as a loincloth to further enhance the connection. For the spear, I decided to replace the top of the blade with a banner from the Adeptus Custodes kit. After some cutting and filing, as well as a little green stuff, the model was all ready to go. I decided to prime the base with Chaos Black, the body with a Gloss Black from Green Stuff World, and the wings with Grey Seer. A while back, my girlfriend expressed an interest in the color shift paints from Green Stuff World, and she said she wanted to try out Evil Forest on her next batch of Sisters of Silence in the future. These colors shift tones depending on the angle you view the model from. Therefore, I decided to try out her ideas on this conversion. After having applied a coat of Evil Forest with the airbrush, I wasn't really feeling it though. I wanted the armor to be brighter and more metallic, so I applied a zenithal coat of Nebula Copper, another color shift paint. It started to look better to me by this point, and as a final highlight, I applied a selective spray of burning gold on the topmost parts. I think this made the armor a little bit more interesting. Next up I gave the armor a coat of gloss varnish to bring out the shine and prepare it for the next step. Using Agrax Earthshade Gloss, I shaded the whole surface of the armor. The low surface tension, thanks to the gloss varnish and shade, allowed it to pool nicely in the recesses without spoiling the color shift effect. Finally, I applied a highlight by dry brushing on some Runefang steel. With the armor done, I moved on to the next big area which was the cape. I started with a base coat of Nagaroth Knight. After this, I started layering on brighter and brighter tones, mixing in 50% Azarius purple to the base paint. Before using Azarius purple on its own. Then I added 50% Gene Stealer Purple for the next layer. And then Gene Stealer Purple on its own, each time applying it to a smaller area. The final layer was a thin line of Gene Stealer Purple mixed with a little Decalia Lilac. To bring all the layers together, I applied a filter of Shayish Purple Contrast Paint, diluted with a huge amount of contrast medium. Next up, I painted the wings. I gave these an overall coat of Space Wolf's Grey on top of the Grey Seer undercoat. Once 
When this was dry, I painted some of the smaller feathers with Basiliconum Grey. These darker feathers were then dry brushed with Dawnstone, followed by Administratum Grey. The brighter feathers were dry brushed with Grey Sear. followed by Pallid Witch Flesh. The hair, as well as the leather straps, were base coated with Abaddon Black. I then layered on Ashen Grey, followed by Dawnstone. The final highlight was Administratum Grey. I then added a filter of Black Templar, diluted with loads of contrast medium. There is a tiny patch of skin visible on the back of the neck of the head I swapped. I base coated this with Cadian Flesh Tone followed by a wash of Reichsland Flesh Shade. When this was dry, I reapplied a layer of Cadian Flesh Tone. As a highlight, I applied some Kislev Flesh. The eye lenses on the helmet were base coated with Wazdaka Red, followed by a wash of Carabur Crimson. Lastly, I applied a small dot of Wild Rider Red. All that was left for the model herself were the silver parts, such as her sword. I base coated these parts in Lead Belcher, followed by a wash of Nuln Oil. I painted these rather basic since I wasn't sure how my girlfriend wanted her weapons to look. We can always go back and change it later if we want to. Finally, I edge highlighted them with Runefang Steel and painted in some chipping too. Now it was time to paint the details on the base. The stone structure she's standing on was base coated with XV88. Followed by a wash of Reichsland Flesh Shade. When this was dry, I gave it a dry rush of Baylor Brown, followed by Zandri Dust. And finally, Ushapti Bone. A filter of very diluted Agaras Dunes was added to bring everything together. The sand I added to the base was dry brushed using Eshin Grey, followed by Dawnstone, and then finally Administratum Grey. The trees and weeds were base coated with Death Core Drab. followed by a wash of Athonian Camo Shade. I then reapplied Deathcore Drab by dry brushing it on, followed by Death Guard Green, and finally Ogren Camo.
The little squirrel on the tree was base coated with Doombull Brown. Followed by a wash of Agrax Earthshade. I then layered on some Tuscore fur. And then highlighted it with Scrag Brown. The eyes were picked out with Evil Sun Scarlet. While the tongue was painted with pink horror. And the teeth were picked out with Screaming Skull. The only thing left now were the skulls and the oath papers on the banner. I base coated these areas with Wraithbone. And then gave them a coat of Skeleton Horde. In the very deepest parts, I gave them a bit of Agrax Earthshade. They were then highlighted with Screaming Skull. And the Oath Papers were given lines of text using Abaddon Black. I also used this to paint the rim of the base. I varnished most of the model with a 50-50 mix of matte and satin varnish, but for the armor I used gloss varnish to keep the shine. The only thing left now was to add some pigments from Vallejo to the base. I used a mix of Old Rust, Rust, Fresh Rust, and European Earth. I simply mix these together on the base using a dry brush. And then I added some European earth to the stone structure as well. To set them, I applied some Tamiya X20A thinner. It took away some of the finish, so I reapplied an extra layer of pigments afterwards. After gluing on some flowers and tufts to the base, this conversion was finally done. It was rewarding to experiment a bit with the color shift paints and to try to turn Indrasta into a Sister of Silence. My girlfriend was quite surprised when she opened the gift, and it was fun to see her reaction. If you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate if you could give it a like. Please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already to get notified about more content like this. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck with your miniatures.